Hello, fellow Voyagers, Jess here with Odyssey Human, here today to talk about the only video you're ever gonna need to understand manifesting. It's a big promise, <laughs> gonna fulfill it today. So welcome to the channel. If that sounds good to you, please subscribe. This is the place where we help you hack through the jungles of consciousness to discover the hidden treasures inside of you. And boy, do you have a lot of treasures in there. Welcome, uh, so this is a big video today and it's interesting because I created this realization and the analogies from using the very thing that I had the realization of. So it came full circle. So we'll dive more into that as we go along today, but I'm really excited to share and had some really big realizations. Um, and I like to think about, you know, when you're first learning a game, let's look at it. I like analogies because um, they give you a body feel of what I'm talking about. When you're first learning how to play a new game, it feels kind of chaotic and random, right? You don't know the rules yet. And it's hard to win when you don't know the rules, right? The first time or two you play, you're getting used to the rules and what the parameters are. And you don't enjoy it as much, right? Because you don't, you don't know how, you don't know how to behave in order to get what you want, which is win. Everybody wants to win the game. <laughs> so so, but as soon as someone explains the rules to you, like once you get it and you're like, oh, and it clicks and then you know how to play, it's like you get it and then it's easy, it's fun, it's simple, it's straightforward, right? But unless you know the rules to the game, it's gonna feel chaotic and random and hard to win and unpleasant. And so I think that's with, you know, games that are too complicated, we're kind of like, I can't win, so I, I move on from this. And so if we look at... The games we've been playing. We've been playing the 3D game for a long time, right? Where we have to really effort to get things or that feels like something's separate from us. Um, we get really frustrated. We feel that separation. We feel the lack. And the 3D is leading our emotional responses, right? We see it. We, it feels like we see it in the 3D and then we react to it and then we try to fix it. We problem solve. That's the game we have been playing because that's what we kind of the, the rules that we got used to, right? We learned all these different rules from as we were growing up. And then there's the manifesting game, right? And then we got into manifesting and we're trying to learn the rules. What are the rules? And we're watching all these different channels how do we win? How do we win? How do we get what we want? Right? That's what we're trying to accomplish in the manifesting game. And it's a totally different game, right? Everything is potential. It's a consciousness matrix. And you're the jumper, you essentially are jumping into different states of consciousness inside of yourself. And then the matrix around you is shifting, right? Your experience of reality is shifting from where you are in consciousness. And every state is accessible to you right now. The illusion is that it's not. And excuse me while I check my notes because this is there was so much juicy stuff that came through for me on this that I want to share with you. So remember, these two games, different rules. If you remember nothing else from this video, remember that all states in the manifesting game, in order to fully be in the manifesting game, the one rule you always want to remember is that all states are accessible to you at all times. All states, all potentials. You can jump from one to the other. You're a jumper. It's a different feel, right? In 3D game, it's very linear. There's a story. We're living out a story. There's only, it feels like we're only on a single path. In the manifesting game, it's, it's breadth, right? It's, there's an expansion to it. And we forget this. Because in the 3D game, we get into these states and these places and these mentalities that feel endless. They feel like they go on forever because they do. Because they do. Because when you're in a state of being, it literally in and of itself is its own, like it is endless. Like if you were able to maintain that state of, in that state of being, it feels endless. It's like one of those illusions where it just keeps going when you get in rooms with like multiple mirrors and it goes on forever. That's what the state feels like. And we forget that we, all the other states are also accessible to us. I remember earlier in my younger days getting in this, I call it the infinite well of sadness, 
where I could cry for years. When I got into that state, I felt like I could cry for years because I could. I could. If I stayed there, I would cry for years. And sometimes in the 3D game, we do get stuck in those states or we from inside that state, we forget that we could ever be happy, that we could ever stop crying, that we could ever get what we wanted, right? Because the endless, there's a tangible feeling of the endlessness of that state because it is endless. It is infinite. That state is an infinite state. However, we can just jump in the three in the manifesting game, right? If we remember nothing else, yes, that state is infinite, but all we have to do is jump over to another state. And then, you know, that because that state's always going to be there. We can always go back to the infinite well of sadness or happiness or frustration or whatever it is. We can always return to it. And if we find ourselves in it, all we do is jump. In the manifesting game, we just jump. We jump out. We jump into a different state of being. So don't forget that. That's going to save you a lot of times when you're in a state of something and you're, if only you remember the one rule of manifesting game is you can always jump, just jump out, jump into another state. There doesn't have to be a reason for it. You don't need things to change to suddenly go from sad to happy, right? On the, in 3D, in the manifesting game, you can jump, you jump from state to state. So and the beauty of it is the be- the more you play, it's like with any game, you develop your own house rules, right? That's why every channel has different house rules. Some tell you to do this, some tell you to do that to win the manifesting game. They're all different because it's all true, right? They've developed their own house rules through their beliefs of say, oh, this worked for me. It could work for you. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so how do we jump? I want you to first, when we're playing the manifesting game, I want you to remember that all states are accessible and a great way to think about it, to visualize it, is think about the terracotta warriors in China. It's a sea of the terracotta figures and they're all exactly the same, right? They're all exactly the same. It's just as far as the eye can see. And this is you. This is what, if you were to look out onto all these versions of you, in the manifesting game, we're talking about the manifesting game here. These are all the potentials of you that you could inhabit through your conscious awareness. And what we do is we bounce. We bounce into the bodies of those terracotta warriors, those versions of us. And then we start simulating as that character, as that persona, as that version of us. And so We literally just bounce around. And so one version of us has what we want. Another version of us has it and doesn't want it. Another version of us never wanted it. Another version of us, right? And it's infinite. It's just, if you looked out onto all these versions of yourself, it would stretch as far as the eye could see, right? But it's not outside of you. Like that is the illusion. It's not outside of you. It's within you and you're bouncing. But think of that image of the terracotta warriors because that's going to help you. Um, and so, yeah, you know, when you jump into a different terracotta warrior or persona, your 3D reality is going to shift, right? It's going to shift and change because you're viewpointing from another perspective. If you haven't seen my identity video, it went viral. Check it out above where I lead you through a viewpointing exercise exactly the same thing. In that exercise, I say, okay, now you're a mother. Now you're a child. Look at the same object. This is what we're doing and the potential that we have where we can just jump into a state, into the same us, right? It's the us that has it. It's the us that believes this. It's the us that has that. And it instantly, as you embody that reality, you're the 3D is going to start to shift, right? Because the reality becomes true. The minute you hop into that viewpoint, because reality is you, it's how you're viewpointing. It's who you're identifying as and the thoughts and the beliefs and the, you know, everything else in that package that comes with being in the body of that terracotta warrior version, you know, whichever version that you've jumped into, you're generating reality as that person as that version of you. And so 
which one are you in? That's really the game. In the manifesting game, it just becomes, how do I land in the version of me that has what I want and keep it? Because when you're in it, you'll know you're in it fully. You've fully embodied it, right? You've jumped out of where you are and into the desired version of you when you naturally simulate as that person. What is simulating? Simulating is your imagination, right? Your imagination is constantly running during the day. You're thinking about you have to pick the kids up from school. You got to make dinner later. You're constantly in your imagination, simulating as the version of you. And so you'll naturally just simulate. This is why they have you do techniques. And, you know, when we're learning manifesting, they say, oh, think the thoughts of that person. Um, Visualize. You're going to do that organically when you've fully made a jump into that identity. It will naturally, you'll naturally have those thoughts. You'll naturally and organically have those feelings. It's harder to try, you know, what we're doing when we don't feel like we're that person is we're, we're actually in a different persona, in a different terracotta warrior over here, way over there. But we're trying to simulate as someone, as a version of ourselves that's way over there. And it doesn't, we feel the disconnect. So all you have to do is release, release from being that person that doesn't have it and move, jump into the potential where you do. Because the truth is you generate truth, reality as whatever viewpoint you're taking up. You're adopting. It will just, because it's all coming from you, right? This is a dream. This is a, this is a consciousness matrix. And so reality, what you're seeing, experiencing, and feeling will naturally come out of you and everything will shape and form and appear to be the world of that viewpoint. When you're in the viewpoint, you're going to live in the world of that viewpoint, When you're in that viewpoint, you're going to experience the thoughts of that viewpoint and organically simulate as that viewpoint, if that makes sense. So if you're still looking out at 3D reality, think about it, then you're in the old game. You're in the old 3D game where you're trying to play by a different set of rules. If you're looking out into reality and thinking deep down your beliefs are, I'm You know, there's this great big world outside of me. I'm trying to affect reality using this whole manifesting thing. You're still playing the 3D game. We need to get rid of those rules. We need to quit playing that way. We need to think about jumping. Think about the sea of all of yous, all the yous you could jump into. And as you jump into it, you assume the viewpoint of that person and you start simulating as it. So you're naturally going to visualize as that person You're going to know that you are that person because they're all you and they're all happening simultaneously. So let's do a little exercise. You ready for this? Um, Say with me, I am someone who had oatmeal for breakfast. I'm someone who had oatmeal for breakfast. Close your eyes. You have a memory, even if you didn't eat oatmeal for breakfast, you have a memory of eating oatmeal for breakfast that probably just popped into your head. That is the viewpoint of the you who did have oatmeal for breakfast this morning. So if you're arguing with me right now and you felt that little like, oh, no, I didn't, I had eggs or I had a bagel. That means you're still in a viewpoint, right? Where we, that disc, there's that disconnect. You're standing in a viewpoint of someone that who ate something else and saying, no, that's not true. That's not my reality. That's not true. But if you close your eyes and say, I'm someone who had oatmeal for breakfast this morning and you're able to release a little bit of that truth that you think is absolute truth in the viewpoint you were at over there where you had a bagel, if you can relax that a little bit, you can access the memory of eating oatmeal for breakfast this morning. It's there. It is totally there. You have the memory of it. And that, in allowing that memory of like, yeah, I did eat oatmeal for breakfast. One of the versions of me ate oatmeal for breakfast this morning. And then feeling that, like allowing that to be true. 
you've just changed viewpoints. Because it's just as true that whatever you ate this morning, it's just as true that you ate that as you ate oatmeal, right? But it's whatever you believe you ate this morning, you're saying, oh, that's the ultimate truth. That's really the truth. But a version of you did have oatmeal for breakfast. So interesting, huh? I, I'm curious to hear what you thought of that exercise. Drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Because really, what is imagination? This was a great example of your Im imagination is not just a creative faculty. It's not some place we go in our heads. It's your natural ability to access all of the viewpoints of all of the different versions of you. That's what your imagination is. And so when you go somewhere in your imagination, that is the viewpoint. You're pinpointing one of those terracotta warriors and seeing and experiencing from their point of view. And so what is imagination? It's the amalgamation. If you could literally sense, if you could put yourself in all of the versions of you simultaneously right now and could see and feel and think and hear and sense and taste and, you know, all of the perceptions that they're having, that's your imagination cumulatively. That is what imagination is. It's your ability to simulate or see or sense the viewpoint of one of the versions of you. And there are infinite. Think about all of the views in front of you, all the yous, the views, <laughs> and what they're seeing and experiencing and feeling. And one of them had oatmeal, one of them had eggs, one of them had whatever you think you ate this morning or remember, because that's an imaginal act, right? What you had for breakfast this morning is an imaginal act. You just as likely had oatmeal as you did whatever you ate. And so as we, in the manifesting game, the only thing we need to remember, the one major rule is that all of those viewpoints are, they're all happening and we can jump into them and we can experience as them. And as we fully experience as them, our realities change and shift. That's it. That's manifesting in a nutshell. So, uh, yeah, if you find the only thing to remember, if you're still playing the 3D game, it means that you haven't assu fully assumed the viewpoint of one of those other versions. You're, you're standing here as the person who doesn't have it, who's trying to get it, who's working really hard, who's exhausted, tired, frustrated. You're playing by the wrong set of rules. Remember, 3D game versus manifesting game. Play the rules in the manifesting game. And the only rule is there's a gazillion versions of you. Jump into the one who's got it. Jump into the one who already has it. Jump into the one who knows it's yours. Jump in and quit jumping out to the one who doesn't, to the one who's looking at 3D, who's letting 3D dictate how they feel, think, believe, know, because it's all coming from you. All these versions, right? That is really the illusion, is that the 3D game is real. The reality, what is, is potential, the reality, the bigger reality is it's all coming through you. Every one of those versions of you, right? Those viewpoints, anyone you adopt, it's still the experience is coming through you like a nighttime dream. It's coming through you. So all you got to do is jump is jump. Let me know what you think. We're going to keep making videos on how to jump. That's essentially what I describe in every video. How do you jump? How do you jump from one viewpoint to the other? But that's in a nutshell what's happening. So let me know what you think. How I got this whole realization and the image of those terracotta warriors was I said to myself, I want a really masterful view of manifesting. And I jumped into that and I was like, okay, and then when I woke up the next morning, it, that, this is what I received. I suddenly had this awareness and the image of that and the simplicity of it of we just don't know the rules. Once you play by the rules, it's really easy. You just jump. You just, all you have to do is jump. And all of them coexist. So we don't have to worry or resist them. We can just jump. 
We can jump from one viewpoint to the other. And if you need a good tangible example of viewpointing, again, I'll link the video I have above about identity shifting, how to easily shift your identity. But that's a great terracotta thing was, you know, a cool way to visualize it. So I hoped, I hope that helped you. Let me know. Drop a comment below. I'd love to engage with you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.